they said kindergarten art class wouldn't come in handy, bro. Come on, yeah. now look at me. Who's winning now, baby? Look at that hand dexterity Dude, on the scissors. On. They don't teach you that. Well, maybe they do teach you that. What are you making? <laughs> this is a template for the gas stove cooktop. For the cutout. Yeah, for the cutout that Ray's gonna cook. Is that where you think it should go? No. Oh. <laughs> we haven't gotten that far yet. The guys have got our cutout for the cooktop marked. And I'm assuming it's correct. I mean, we triple checked it, so I'm hoping it's all right. Okay. Is there metal shavings coming out of this? Yeah, he cut metal with it this morning. No, we need to not have metal shavings getting raked across. We need to blow this out. Okay, blow it out. Oh, here he comes. You're busted. I'm going to plunge cut here short of this point and run to this corner. Then I'll just flip the saw and run back to that corner. The biggest mistake I can make here is like plunge and then try to back it up and have that thing catch and zoop and just so if you've never done that i have and it can mess you up that that is what it'll that do. is a problem it'll all right here that. we I got to point out also pretty critical to getting this plunge cut parallel and in the right spot with our line here is I'm aligning this indicator. This is where your blade is going to be right here with the line as I'm plunging. So I'm not just like randomly setting that down. I'm actually aligning that perfectly on the line and then aligning the blade in the back. And that way I know I'm parallel. Otherwise you could be like plunging in all crooked. Bad news. got this cut out now but I failed to mention one other critical thing so that I don't scratch the top of this because it's wood is I was not putting any weight on the base of this saw I was holding the weight of the saw and just letting it like hover just above the work surface otherwise you could put blue tape to ride the base on and that would lift the base of the saw up like a 64th of an inch which is enough to not scratch it yeah there you go now oh, you're doing it he's doing it right very little pressure lots of stroking <laughs> there you go sorry I, I can't help myself he's doing it totally perfectly i just i can't help myself you know you think you could fit a few more pro tips on like how to cut this thing out or what <laughs> um that was everything i knew yeah I, I gotta say the tip about keeping the uh front of the base plate aligned the little indicator mark when you start your plunge cut that actually is a great tip and i never did that until like a year ago when you said that for the first time for a pro tip. Really? And I was like, oh, yeah. that bit, I never, I just never did it. Hmm. Yeah, you might be on the line, but your blade <laughs> might be like that. <laughs> ka -ka. We had this cabinet made especially to accommodate this cooktop. And so you can see where the cutout is. The inside walls of the cabinet are exactly where they need to be for this thing to slide down in there. Otherwise, what we were going to have to do is actually notch the sides of the cabinet out, which would not be fun, but possible. Uh, we do have to cut these flat pieces out and that's no big deal. I think we're just gonna trace it out and get Jason to hand saw it all out. We'll be good to go. Yeah, there's a screw right there. All right, well, let's, let's, let's kind of torque it on out of there. Oh, yeah. Mm. You want to do the sink cut out next? Well, I would love to, except the sink was all smashed up oh, when I opened really? the box. Shoot. Yeah. No. And um, that, that's pretty sad. But the edge of them, the flange that overlaps the countertop, yeah. it's super thin. Okay? It's fragile. And mm -hmm. they don't package it in a way that it could take any kind of hit. You know? <laughs> so it took a hit. It's bent, it's mangled up. So she went. Coming? It's going to be a week. 
No. It's going to be a week. And so she was like, is that okay? And I'm like, well, it's okay. It's just going to be pushing everything back. Yeah. You know, I got to get the water on the house before I can get the gas to get all hooked up and get gas to run the water heater. But if you don't know, super important. Never turn on a water heater if it doesn't have water in it. Mm. Cause it does this like self explode mode <laughs> when you do that. No, it burns up the stuff inside, right? <laughs> it's kind of technical, but uh, anyway, so it's all, it's all like, uh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so hard to tell but it looks like the wrong color again this room it was like the cut job was not the same color even though it said it was in the same can yeah this is why people hate painting right here Jono and Jason are recutting and then touching up the homeowner has requested to us that we don't do a whole second coat of paint if at all possible because it's gonna cost a lot of money and this one's really close to being okay so we told her we would just touch it up Cut in where it's thin and let her look at it, see if that's good. Bob Ross in it today, boys. Mm, that's a good move. Maybe give that the slightest just brush out too. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there you go. If you're still watching this video, I wanna say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, dude. Actually, what he meant to say is thank you and sorry that you're still watching this video. <laughs> haven't uncovered any of these doors yet, so we're gonna do that and just see how they feel. I'm imagining we don't need to do any sanding or fixing, which is pretty common with even a prime door. The way I'm gonna tackle this is to roll the paint on with a whiz roller to keep it all wet, like a wet edge on this big panel, and then just brush it back, keeping it all wet at the same time so that there's not as much of a chance of brush marks. Um, we did consider taking all these off taking them outside hanging them somehow spraying them but we're not looking at good weather here basically it's pouring rain today it's supposed to pour rain a lot of days and once you spray them you really can't touch them or rehang them for like at least 24 hours so that isn't caught i don't know if it should be After doing a couple of these doors, I realized there's like microscopic dots of the primer that stand proud and you can't see them, but when I'm painting, I keep thinking there's junk in the paint and it's not, it's little dry dots of freaking primer on there. So got the sanding pad out and I'm hitting these doors now. I'm just having a feel for these dots because you absolutely cannot see them until there's paint on them. <laughs> and Jono just fell. <laughs> Dude. I don't know what happened with that. He hit the ceiling. Oh, he hit the ceiling. I bet he hit the ceiling. Did you hit the ceiling? <laughs> yeah, he was ready to fix yeah. it. What is this the only thing out? keeping me going is Jono's playlist today. Dude, we went from like BB uh, King to uh, reggae to... Banjo music. Banjo <laughs> music to like Come Fly Away by the... I don't even know what it was, dude. It's everywhere. It's all over the place. <laughs> My brain's like... He's like, oh, I got your new boat playlist. I'm like, oh, yeah. no, you don't. <laughs> what is this? Is this something important? That was the rip off of that, I think. I'm pretty sure. Today's video is brought to you by Sunday Lawn Care. And today is the first day of spring. We can finally get back out in the yard. It's warm enough. The grass is coming up. And thankfully I have Sunday Lawn Care to help me kickstart my lawn, help it fill in where it's been blasted by my dogs and kids over the winter, get it looking great again. 
Sunday Lawn Care is great because they can customize what you need, get it to your front door so you don't have to think about it or figure it out if you're not a lawn expert, which I'm not. So I've got a few things today. Starting with first my Fescue Rescue Lawn Overseed, which I'm gonna spread out through the yard and that'll help fill in bare spots. Next, I can fertilize my lawn with the nutrient pouches, which are friendly, simple, powerful ingredients. I just hook it to the hose and then water will run for like 10 or 15 minutes, spray down the whole yard and everything's gonna come up a lot nicer. These pouches are made with no harsh chemicals. They are designed with family in mind with carefully selected ingredients. They do have an active lawn formula for those of you guys like me that have like five pets and how many kids do I have? Three? Three kids at least. And I've also got a way to take care of weeds in my lawn and on my driveway with the Weed Warrior and Dandelion Doom. I love that name and I'm going to get those going as well. So if you're excited about spring and summer like I am and you want to have a great looking lawn, just head to GetSunday.com slash Perkins and use code Perkins20. You can get 20% off a custom order. I'd really recommend it. It works great. It's super easy. Thank you, Sunday Lawn Care, for sponsoring our video. And let's get back to work. If anyone's still with us and wondering, I'm doing each of these sections one at a time now and brushing out the paint in the same direction of the joinery of the wood. So you can see that seam right there. So I'm gonna paint just here. And I'm going around and getting that roll over mm -hmm. off all of the stuff. Feathering that. Get that. Wow. That's, that's why my hands are so painty. Can't keep up with you, you're so fast. I don't oh, know where to put the camera. Uh, <laughs> here, there, what do you want me to get? So on these I'm going down to the middle. Pulling, then I'm starting at the bottom and lifting off. Good job, Benjamin Williams. I'm imagining you're doing this to spray paint the heads of the screws. Yes, I am. And it's not because I didn't spend a long time trying to find black painted screws Three quarters of an inch long, nowhere to be found. Yeah. Now, I tell, you. I tell you what, the perfect screw would be a door hinge screw. Can't find them. Uh, these are to go through the brackets into our shelving, I'm assuming as well. That's right. That's right. They're pretty beefy, actually. These are number 10 by three quarters. Number three Phillips head. I like the number three. That's it's, nice. It is nice. Have you ever Amazon screws? Yeah, well, you can probably buy them on Amazon if you thought one day ahead. No, I don't. <laughs> I can't think that far ahead. That's that's pretty heavy. We'll have to dry it overnight. We're gonna give it a test fit. Now have to go forward or back? Forward. <laughs> Looks great. Now, I have one of these and I can tell you, mine just sits there. There's no fastening. Really? That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only reason I know is I replaced my countertops. So when I went to pull it out, I was like, oh, this is gonna be a hassle. I got a butter knife under the edge and lift, just lifted it straight out. No, it's for smallest burner. Look at that, it even says it on there. That's a nice cooktop. I like it. Jason doesn't like how the knobs are in the front, but I'm, I'm thinking that's the only place they can go. Final task for today, Ray and Jono have got these brackets mounted. They're gonna do some shelf rod. These are just stock from Lowe's, painted black like this. They look pretty nice, and then the rod just clips into these little plastic holders. I used these on the last job, I think the duplex, and even though I aligned the brackets, some of these didn't line up, so it kind of gave me a hard time. Curious if these work better. Let's we'll see if it works. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's doing it. Yep. It's tipping. All right, here. You hold that side. Oh, right. and Jesus. That's <laughs> that's what it was doing on the last one. Ow. What, um, you what did you do about this? I don't remember what I did. I think maybe I 
Give me that pole. I'm bent gonna... this, or I like lifted the end little things on the rod a little bit. Mm. Like maybe I lifted those a fuzz. Yeah. Clip it in and lift it. Lift it. Hold yours in, Jay. Perfect. Look at uh, that. Now it's on there. But no. Fuck. <laughs> I already did warn the guys about the problem I had last time so they didn't lose their minds as, as quickly. <laughs> yeah, we lost them, though. Still lost Is that in? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Jono just like hung on this thing for a second and bent it down. So good luck on the ones that have four brackets. Hopefully these weren't too much more like trouble to install, but the reason they have this unique and special looking design with the like extra arm holding the, the thing Pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so they call it a bypass rod holder so that your hangers can slide all the way across without hitting something. Yes, I see that. So, just, yeah, when they hook over, just to demonstrate, they will slide right through. There we go. Which I don't know how often you take your clothes from like one side and you're like, I'll put them way down here. Never. I mean, they at least got a unique, you know, twist on that for, you know, they got the market cornered right there. I mean, I did finish all these doors. They're pretty dang good, what do you think? I think they look fantastic. I mean, our only other option was like, should we take them outside and spray them? Well, it's raining, so that's not an option. Or take them back to my shop, which is a good place to spray, but then you have to transport it without damaging it. And, and rehang it. Without... That's harder than it sounds. It sounds easy, but you like lay them against something and they stick. Even if you wait a week, mm -hmm. I mean the paint, well, I don't know, you could wait a month and it would still stick to something. So they're next to impossible to transport. I know there's maybe good ways to do it. Another problem is if you do it outside, like bugs, they're just automatically drawn to the wet paint for some reason. They just <laughs> stick in the wet paint. And then if you've ever tried to touch up and brush a spot on a, on a spray door and then you touch it up with a brush, mm. it just draws attention to it more because the texture is different, the paint flashes like weird, and you don't get the same sheen. You gotta go from somewhere where it's painted to somewhere where it's not in that dried out edge Kind of like, what do yeah. they call that in um, sand something, sand, something sand. I don't know what you're talking sand about. Sand piling? I don't know. <laughs> if you paint a car, that happens. Okay. Unless you have the blending agent. Oh, that melts into the other yeah. paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're not doing that. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I don't know how to paint a door other than doing this. And this actually turned out really good. Yeah, and, I'm uh, happy with it. Look at that. I think it I looks mean, great. No, I mean, totally. Um, now, did she have some special paint? It was trim paint. It was? Door and trim paint. Door and trim paint. So and it, it was. It laid a lot flatter. Yeah. Once you walked away for a while. It looked kind of brushy. Yeah. And then it did lay pretty flat. Well, that might be the trick right there. Yeah. Not the easiest thing to do, but you did it. Almost lost my mind. I got something bad for you. Oh no. Better call the paint guy about that. I feel like I'm Jamie this afternoon and he's me. He's trying to say <laughs> to wrap a, a rag around this and try to paint it, spray paint it. And I'm like, no. That's... Don't, don't stick it all the way down. You'll never get it off. Oh, we'll get it off. I don't want to. We'll just leave a little flat. There you go. Okay, now I'll paint it. <laughs> Nothing. You like my new working stocks? Yeah. Those are nice. <laughs> I did notice those. Oh, you're getting like me, man. I was like going to wear cushy shoes today, but I thought, ah, whatever. Part of our services here at Perkins Enterprises are hugging homeowners <laughs> when you're having a bad day. I just missed it, but uh, Jason, there you go. That's that's part of the services we provide, I guess. Sometimes you just need a good Thank hug. you. <laughs> just it's need a good stressful hug. finishing a house. I've done it myself and like... You, you just always think you're almost there, and then you're not. Okay. Ramel did decide she wants a second coat on these doors, which I agree with. It's really hard to get a one coat finish on a paint job that's like fantastic. We're gonna scuff them down with these little cling spore squishy pads, which are great for stuff like this. Because they're squishy, uh, it doesn't really take off the material, it'll just take off like the fuzzies. And uh, Jason's gonna help me, so we can do this super fast. What do you think? Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> I tell you what, sanding between coats makes such a difference in paint or anything, yeah, finishing anything. And it was one thing we didn't do as we were new builders. Just didn't know. 
Yeah. They had to sand between all the coats. This way, right? No, no. Again, well, that's what knocks all the ridges down, no, right? With it, with the grain or the faux grain, even. Oh. With it, with it, with, with it. it. So you don't go sideways. I would not do sideways okay. if I were you. I hope that wasn't <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> You're messing with me. All right, good, good. That's a good tip, though. Yeah. Go this way. That way. Oh, I did yeah. that. Oh, that. I did that okay. too. Right. Woo! Yes. And this also gives it a little tooth to where the next coat will stick oh. really well. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is a semi-gloss paint. So it's pretty slick. Yeah, and paint doesn't stick to slick surfaces as good. Yeah. So you could have a situation where the top coat would want to come off the bottom coat easily. Perfect. If you didn't. I swear this is the last thing we're going to say, but we also wrapped this with tape and then unwrapped it so that we would take all the fuzzies off of it and hopefully not get any fuzzies left in this paint job. That is it for our video today. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. And I want to remind everyone of our affiliate partner, Realtruck.com. I just got some new racks for my truck, and that's to hold this basket that I have so that on trips I can still close my bed cover, which I also got from Realtruck.com, and have this basket of extra stuff on top, keep my stuff dry underneath. So they're in a slid forward position now. Uh, I can move them wherever I want in this track. But I also have links in the video description to all other kinds of truck racks you might want for your truck. They're a great deal compared to other sites that I've checked out. So make sure to check that out in the video description as well. Thank you for building with us. We'll see you on the next one.